our way to Rome. On our way to Rome. We very recently took a flight from Nice to Rome where we had a one day layover before taking our onward flight to a new destination. So get ready to join us on this one day layover tour of the city of lights, Rome. Another reason why traveling with hand baggage is the best? Any day. I mean just the lines. Not the line, the lines. It's really crowded, the baggage claim area. Right next to the baggage claim area, you have the uh, ticket kiosks. So you can buy your tickets to go to the city center from here. We have booked our tickets. It was 28 euros for the Leonardo Express, the fastest, uh, the most convenient option to go to the city center. So you have cheaper options, the bus option. And for that one, it's just 6 euros. Um, and in comparison, the train costs 14 and it takes uh, half the time, so it's completely worth it if you're short on time like us. Let's catch the train. Yeah. Trenitalia. We have reached the Rome Termini railway station, just got off the train, it's right over here. The idea right now is to have something to eat. We are going to have pizza at the central market of Rome, which is right next to the railway station. We were enjoying the vibes of this market and were waiting for some amazing pizza. So in case you decide to take the bus to come to Rome Termini from the airport, it's just towards one side of the train station. It's called TerraVision. Probably sure there are many more companies. It's, this is one of them. Costs around six for one way, I guess. Yeah. Pretty good to have a food market like this one next to the train station. Pretty handy. Now we'll go to our hotel and then start exploring the city. Can't wait for it, right? We found ourselves inside an apparel store which happens to be right next to the platform. Nice railway station, right? It's got a lot of things to do. Beyond imagination. Now we are going to go to St. Peter's Square and Basilica. So we'll start off with the Vatican City. We are going to take the metro to go to the Vatican City. It's hot, right? Yes. The map has become a fan. <laughs> We had taken Metro Line A and uh, we got down at the stop called Ottaviano. It's really hot today and sunny. It's uh, around 36 degrees. Right after exiting the Metro stop, we can see some souvenir shops. What are your first impressions of Rome? We are using the shade of the walls so that we don't get burnt. That's right. <laughs> so does this place remind you of the movies that were shot here? <laughs> Reminds you of Da Vinci Code? Yes. Absolutely. Here we are. Ooh. Oh yes, it's so huge. So probably if someone opens Vatican TV, they'll see us now here. <laughs> Let's go. In front of me is the long queue to go inside St. Peter's Basilica. Queue wasn't that bad, right? It took, it took how, what, around 10 minutes? Yeah. yeah, I've heard horror stories before. It was nothing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, airport security was longer this morning than this. The St. Peter's Basilica is one of the largest buildings in the world and is the largest of the Peppel Basilicas. 
The present basilica built on the Constantinian one is the result of the popes of the Renaissance who relied on great artists like Michelangelo, Bernini, etc. and takes us on a journey through art, faith and spirituality where we can admire the magnificence of the building and walk through the corridors, visit the chapels and enjoy the beauty of numerous works of art like Michelangelo's Pity. At the moment, it's also possible to visit the tombs of the popes located in the grottoes of the Vatican and see the tomb of St. Peter and his successors. So a nice, refreshing place to fill water. Water. <laughs> so the outer columns of the St. Peter's Square seems to be a popular resting place. Place to chill from the sun. The last time when I was over here, uh, I was standing over there and the Pope was right up there in the window straight up there in that building so if you're lucky once a week the pope comes out we are now crossing the tiber river and uh, the majestic castle san angelo is in front of us there it is and this one's the river that's the castle san angelo bridge so we were Inside the Vatican, now we are re-entering Rome. Enjoying? <laughs> you can't possibly go inside everywhere in just one day of layover in Rome. So we just walked around and saw some places from outside. Next, Piazza Navona. So that the scaffolding looks like the original structure, they have painted the walls there. Nice! Born as a place of spectacle, Piazza Navona is an architectural miracle in the heart of the eternal city, filled with masterpieces in perfect harmony with each other. The imposing fountain of the four rivers in the center of the piazza has four giant marble statues representing the Nile of Africa, the Ganges of Asia, the Danube of Europe, and Rio de la Plata of the Americas. Towering over the group of sculptures is a gigantic Egyptian obelisk, which is a Romanian copy done during the reign of Emperor Domitian. At the end of the Piazza Navona, there are two fountains, the Fountain of the Moor and the Fountain of Neptune. From Piazza Navona, let's make our way to the Pantheon. Yet another beautiful church. So Rome has like a million of those. We are now about to enter the Pantheon. And it's pretty crowded today, being a Sunday of course and in July. What's your take on it? Long way to go, but interested to see what's there inside. Yeah. <laughs> about to enter after a half an hour wait in the queue. We are finally inside the Pantheon. It uh, costs 10 euros for two of us, so five each to come inside. And it's spectacular. The Pantheon is famous for being the most preserved monument of ancient Rome. It was constructed as a temple dedicated to the gods and later on became the burial ground for several important people, including famous artists and kings. According to legend, it was built on the site where Romulus, the founder of Rome, ascended into the sky to join the gods. The most impressive element of the Pantheon has got to be the dome, which is the largest one ever built in unreinforced concrete. There's a wonderful dome with natural light coming in from the centre. When in Italy, you need to have a lot of pasta and that's exactly what we did next. Italian white wine. Oh God, yes. The lasagna is so fresh and so steamy hot that it's bubbling. Looks insane. 
the meatballs look really juicy filled with tomato based sauce and of course when in Italy you get a lot of cheese overall an amazing spread it's, it's piping hot here yeah. it is Three, two, one, go. So good. It's so good. And now I'm gonna taste it. It's hot, cheesy, creamy, bubbly. Everything that you want in a good lasagna bolognese. It's amazing. I'm going to go in for the meatball spaghetti and first things first I'm going to take a lot of the parmesan cheese and sprinkle all over the pasta now I'm going to twirl the pasta how's my pasta twirling skills it worked it's good it's top class now also want to taste the meatballs so here it goes. Ah, looks really juicy and meaty. That's all you want in your meatballs. Really impressive. The top layer is the best, right? And it's one of the best lasagnas ever. It's too good. Now that's a pro move, putting cheese on the meatball. Go for it. <laughs> I'm in a cheese land. Oh yes. Mm. So these are lemon cellos and they gave us complimentary lemon cellos in the end. So nice. <laughs> Cheers. We had them like shots and they were nice. The lemon cello might just be the best thing that we had today, right? Exactly. <laughs> just came out of the restaurant. The food was exquisite, wasn't it? It was very good. And the people were very nice. It was so good. I mean the lemon cello killed it. It was too good. Yeah, I think the lemon cello was the best. <laughs> Before having a look at the Trevi Fountain, we are just going to click a few pictures in front of the Temple of Adrian. And it's still really sunny and it's almost 6.45. Seems like it's free to enter the Temple of Adrian. So we'll just have a quick look. I've never been inside. Today, the Temple of Adrian houses a museum dedicated to Adrian and an exhibition hall where some of the remains of the temple can be seen on display. The legendary street between the Trevi Fountain and the Pantheon. It's packed with tourists. You can stare at the chocolate fountain forever. With huge marble reliefs and the statue of goddess Roma, this neoclassical structure was built in honor of the first king of a unified Italy. After its creation, it also became the home of Italy's crypt of the unknown soldier and several monuments to military conflicts of the 20th century. So be ready to witness the famous Trevi fountain to the left. And that there it is. Just look at the crowd. So many people. With a height of 85 feet and a width of 160 feet, Trevi Fountain is the largest fountain in the Eternal City, constructed using travertine stones and one of the most beautiful examples of Baroque architecture in the world. So in front of the main door of the sixth floor, there's this buzzer. We buzzed in and they let us in from downstairs. Room 632, where are you? Feels pretty warm. I can see an AC remote, but yeah, I can see an AC as well. <laughs> Uh, 
And honestly, I'm pretty happy with the washroom. There's this Italian bidet, the toilet, toilet rolls, nice shower, and then a nice big wash basin. So we're just gonna freshen up for a little bit and then we'll go to the Colosseum once it's less sunny, let's say. So now Rome at night. Pretorio. This time we'll be taking Metro Line B to go to Colosseum. So we've reached Colosseo, the metro stop, and we're coming out. And just as you come out, you have the majestic structure in front of you. The Roman Colosseum is one of the most famous buildings ever built and has stood at the center of Rome for nearly 2000 years from the days in which the empire dominated ancient Europe and all the way up to today. The Colosseum could seat more than 50,000 people and this amphitheater used to house gladiatorial combats and wild animal fights. So we are done with everything that we had to see in this tour of Rome. So, what are your impressions? So we are signing off at the airport with some tagliatelle with beef ragu and arancini. Feeling good? Yes. Perfect. We've been seeing this brand called Italy in a lot of places over here. Uh, first time trying it out. Yeah. So this is what you can do if you have one day of layover in the city of lights, Rome. See you in our next vlog from Abu Dhabi.